tecnología inteligente que hace que los datos de transacciones en tiempo real sean viables para obtener información sobre el recorrido del cliente, detección de fraude de alerta temprana, rendimiento operativo en todos los entornos bancarios, minoristas y de procesamiento de pagos. La plataforma de datos en tiempo real prospera en ecosistemas de autoservicio y omnicanal donde la recopilación, organización y visualización de datos oportunos es un desafío. Hoy nos acompaña en la con su presencia Stacy Gorkov, VP of Marketing and Channel Development de INEPCO y la acompaña su madrina de Moneta, Gabriela Castro. Démosle un fuerte aplauso para las ideas. For many financial service institutions, improving channel profitability, fixing performance issues faster, and delivering an amazing omnichannel customer experience starts behind the scenes. Channel operations and IT support teams need the ability to answer one simple but urgent question. How are customer transactions performing? The more complex your banking environment is, the harder this question is to answer. Data is often owned by multiple teams, delivered in multiple protocol languages, and supplied in fragments. This is why leading banks and credit unions are turning to Anetco Insight real-time transaction monitoring software. Anetco Insight provides the end-to-end -end operations you needed to make sure all your infrastructure components are talking to each other seamlessly. Know how every banking application is performing. See where network bottlenecks or connection failures are occurring. And identify third-party systems that are slow or non-responsive. Inetco Insight works by continuously gathering rich records of every customer transaction off the network. There is no extra traffic load, no code changes, and no need to deploy agents on applications, switches, or devices. Configurable dashboards let you see how many transactions you are processing and how these transactions are moving across your banking environment. Customizable real-time alerts set around expected transaction volumes, timeframes, and application response times will tell you why transactions are failing, slowing down, or being declined. Inetco Insight's trending graphs let you call up historical transaction performance in seconds. Explore patterns over any time period, ranging from three minutes to eight days. You can also visualize this transaction data with Inetco Analytics for deeper customer analytics and on-demand reporting. Inetco Insight's detailed transaction logs let you conduct filtered or wildcard searches for fast transaction inquiries. Rather than digging through switch journals, you can find these transactions in seconds. With Inetco Insight, transactions are automatically mapped to your underlying banking network, making it easy to isolate the root cause of a performance issue. See the hop-by-hop -hop response times for every banking service request you process. Other network, application payload, and metadata is also displayed to help you research issues and restore service on average 65-75% to 75 faster. If your financial services institution is focused on improving channel profitability, fixing transaction performance issues faster, and delivering an amazing omnichannel customer experience, it's time you learned more about Anetco Insight real-time transaction monitoring software. For more information, or to request a demo, Contact insight at inetco.com. Welcome, Stacy. How are you? Hi. Another country that I forgot to mention when I started the session Canada. Right? It's That's very Canada. cold there right now. Yes. I'm sorry, very happy. sorry about that. You right. have more than 10 countries represented here, or 12, or something like that. So, so we have a so in Inetco, it's a partner that we have uh, since the last century, perhaps, uh, working since the times when we had to translate uh, uh, you know, legacy code like SNA, X25, things like that that nobody even uh, cared about that. But since then, we have been working with Inetco, and they have been working with this uh, solution inside that provides our customers in Mexico and in many countries with the real time information about how is the flow of the transactions, how are the transactions interacting and the customers can take uh, action in case that there are uh, actions that are not particularly well performing, like uh, too, more, too many rejectals or uh, too long uh, response times, so I think we can identify those uh, situations in a real-time environment the customer can take action to correct. Am I 
right? In the land of So <laughs> you're not lying yet. <laughs> but uh, you know, what is what is driving the need for real time data? What is it? What is happening in the market? Okay, so just to start off with um, a few facts and figures here. Gartner predicts that um, by 2022, more than half of major new business systems will incorporate continuous intelligence. And by that, they mean real-time contextual data um, to improve decisions. And if we stop and we think about this, you know, essentially what we're seeing is that more and more businesses are deeming real-time data to be mission critical. Now, when we think about the payments world, we know that data is probably the most valuable at that moment of creation. So right at that moment of creation. And there's various real-time, um, we'll call them levers that we've identified, including customer engagement, uh, fraud and risk mitigation, <clears throat> some of the data depreciation that we're facing on a daily basis. These are all real-time levers that are causing people to look at real-time data a little bit more seriously. So where is the real-time uh, real, uh, transaction data being used? So how many of us right now feel like we're drinking from what we'll call the digital data firehose? Put up your hands. There's a few people out there, yeah, for sure. So as far as um, what iNeco does and where our real-time data platform is being used today, uh, we're really looking at uh, ways to help people conquer uh, the performance, the, the volume challenges that come with high-velocity payments data. Now, we do this by essentially letting you continuously monitor every single transaction from both the service perspective and the fraud perspective. We also collect real-time data. We make it easy to do this across all channels. So it's ATM, point of sale, um, all of your digital channels. We take that data and we can make it very, very easy to feed it into various real-time um, real-time machine learning applications, analytics applications. Um, it could also be various applications of your choice, so cash management, uh, we're seeing systems management. Essentially, this data is available to act on, uh, depending on who you are, who your team is. Um, that it's up to you how to use that data. So, so we have a uh, customers in Mexico and uh, banks. Uh, the payment processors and retailers use it, but why are they using it? Okay, so how do we help in their digital transformations? Um, and you're right, we do have a number of different customers, some of them being payment processors, some of them being banks, some of them being retailers. And there's a number of different reasons why they're looking to iNeco to um, help them with their real-time data challenges. One is the way that we actually collect the data. So. When we say that we are real-time, we mean that we are real-time. And we are collecting data directly off the wire as it's in flow. Um, we do not deploy agents. We do not have to go in and cause any type of latency to the switch because we don't touch the switch. Uh, we are completely out of band and, again, make it very easy to consistently look at data, be it uh, payments data in the mobile realm, it could be payments data in the POS realm. Um, to us, data is data. Transactional data is data. Um, as long as it flows across the wire, we have the opportunity to collect it. Now, once we've collected that data, we decode in real time as well. So if you think about peering into a transaction, there's all sorts of information in there. There's the terminal ID numbers, there's response codes, there's the amounts. All of that is called application payload um, information. And we decode at a level where we showcase every single field that's contained within a transaction. Now, not only are we looking at application, we're looking at network level communication information as well. And then the metadata that sits on top of the transaction. Now, because you have access to all of this rich data in one central location, uh, We've got the ability to be very, very precise when we start setting rules, <clears throat> rules-based alerts, when we start thinking about machine learning and what it is that we want to feed those models. 
uh, when we start thinking about adaptive analytics, these are all use cases where again and again, um, the banks, the retailers, the payment processors that we work with, these are all use cases where they're very interested in working with us and just to get that data. And how does the cost in the real time data journey usually start? <laughs> the journey. So, journey. yeah, the journey. The so journey the, is. What is NICO? What is the. BECU? BECU. Ah, BECU. Okay. So, BECU is one of the largest credit unions in North America. Uh, they have, I believe it's about 20, 21 billion in assets. Uh, they've got a fleet of about 250 ATMs. And the crazy thing about this credit union is that they only have two branches where tellers exist. Everything else is run through self-service channels. So for them, member experience is paramount. Um, their data journey started with the ability to look at ATMs, to look at uh, the real-time transaction performance, and understand how do we uh, max out on our availability, make sure that our ATMs are up 24-7 regardless. Um, and then looking beyond the ATM, understanding how every transaction flows all the way back to the host authorization and back. If there's any type of issues that are affecting how those transactions complete, they wanted to know immediately what those issues were. Now, from there, we took the data I mentioned, all the decoding that we do, um, and we actually built out BI dashboards that were all about, um, in this case, ATM channel intelligence. So looking at the way that customers were choosing to interact, uh, looking at ATM profitability, uh, really truly understanding um, and analyzing how the fleet was performing overall. Uh, the next step in their journey, they came to us and they said, hey, this data is actually very, very valuable from a cash management perspective. How can it help us um, actually look at forecasting improving our forecasting, doing so on an intraday basis, um, and also understanding and improving the accuracy of our replenishment. Um, so this was the next kind of step, and we were able to help them achieve over 80% cash utilization at each individual ATM. And then the final step of this journey, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit, but uh, the payment fraud detection. So of course, putting real time putting decoded transactions so that you can see every message field, uh, putting a rules-based engine and then machine learning on top of that, we Thank had you. a pretty valuable That makes sense there. that if you are analyzing the data in real time, you can detect that the is something that is not in the right direction. Right? Exactly, okay. exactly. So um, just to give you an example of some of the BI dashboards that we built out for them, this is uh, something that the ECU uses to identify where they should renew their leases or put new ATMs. What we're seeing here, this was built out in Tableau, but we do um, also build out to, it could be Microsoft BI, it could be Jaspersoft. To us, our value is the data. Um, depending on what it is that the customer is interested in using on the analytics front, we can push that data forward. So in this case here, we're looking at everything from queue times at ATMs to understanding customer engagement by um, various, in this case it's zip code, uh, understanding where customers are placing their ATMs, and then of course looking at the actual performance of each individual ATM to know how many transactions are happening, uh, when are they happening, what is the value, how many on us versus off us transactions are happening. These are all things that they were taking into consideration when deciding where to renew their leases on their ATMs. Yeah, and then I'm just actually going to skip to, um, there's one other story that I'd love to share with you. I, I know these guys who are, who is from Iglawa? There's a few of them. Um, you know, and their, their customer journey started somewhere different. So of course, um, not maybe so interested in the self-service side, um, in terms of starting with how are my ATMs performing. But for them, that question was, well, how does our switch perform? Um, and getting into the idea here of switch performance and managing the ATM, the point of sale, payment authorization processes, um, that follows suit to also needing the real-time transaction performance data. So from an operational perspective, if anything should be happening, transactions may be being declined from, for some unexpected reason, uh, slowing down, etc. We can help them identify 
and uh, quickly research those transactions. Um, operational analytics, so the data is being forwarded up to um, assist in operational analytics and understanding their environment, um, as well as payment fraud detection. So taking the data, forwarding it up, running their own proprietary algorithms on that data. Uh, this, is, this is more of a journey that you would see that's uh, a payment processing oriented story. Very good. So yeah. you have even uh, Yeah, we have a few questions. <laughs> Are you proud of this? this is I am. <laughs> okay, nice. this is a network operation center from Nicola. It's uh, where they monitor 60% uh, of the credit card transactions in this country, and they are aware of uh, whatever transaction doesn't flow in the right direction, they can detect and, and make uh, provisions to, to help their customers. Right? Exactly. So, okay. And what about that? So, what, what you are telling me is that many of the customers are going the next step and say, I already have the real-time data, I do I can do analytics of that data, I can do fraud detection, I can find uh, things that are not right. So tell us about uh, the next step from my from Ineco. Sure, okay. So in September we launched Ineco Insight 7. And this was a huge deal for us because it was our entry platform, our machine learning platform. Um, now, as we mentioned before, when we look at our true strength, it's the real-time data that we're able to capture. Um, it was not that hard for us to actually go and start talking to customers and identify a need for looking at uh, that real-time data from a broad perspective. So I think that some of the key things that I would like to highlight in this release is just the fact that we've now put together a very customizable, custom customizable rules-based um, payment fraud alerts package. Uh, this is done to actually look at specific um, fraudulent patterns such as transaction reversal fraud, man in the middle attack, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit here too. Um, cash out, so rapid succession um, transaction patterns, and then payment out there. So those payments that maybe uh, don't quite match the usual customer uh, journey. Now, we also have opened up the product to integrate and blend in user sanction lists, card lab lists, negative country lists, um, and then put in the risk scoring models. So again, these are in real time. They get calculated every time a transaction event occurs. Um, we are using individual customer machine learning models that give you precise um, scoring that makes it very, very easy if you are going to block those transactions um, to do so in a way that uh, is not going to cause a lot of customer friction. We get all the way down to the IP address level when we block transactions. So, yeah. um, do, do you have a kind of a object? This is a, 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 to detect it for a payment trial, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, when, when we're asked about use cases and if we talk about use cases, most of them have to do with uh, the suspicious activity monitoring detection of the man in the middle attacks and transaction risk scoring. Um, and just to go through, you know, here's some ideas as to what we can detect in real time. Um, if there are missing backend links, again, because we do capture that full end-to-end -end transaction journey, we would quickly identify if there's any missing links. So let's say that there was malware sitting on a switch. Um, the transaction made it to the which, but didn't make it back to the host authorization, we would pick up on that very, very quickly. Um, suspicious repeat terminal usage, so that could be on us, remote on us, or off us transactions that are coming in. We would identify that very quickly for um, cash out scenarios. And then the impossible transacting scenarios, so those cases where, let's say that um, you have one car that's being used at the velocity, it's, it's being used at different distances uh, that just don't make any sense, or perhaps um, at a speed or succession that falls out of pattern for that customer, we would pick up on things such as that as well. So it's kind of a starting from monitoring a single transaction, now it's a complete solution for all the transaction flow from the device to the 
real dynamics. Exactly. Exactly. And um, you know, I, I like to show this diagram because I think it's the it's the best um, to actually kind of point out what we're doing here. So we can see the point of sale, the ATMs, the branch, the mobile, the internet banking, um, all the various protocols that are coming in. We have a library that's very, very deep when it comes to banking and payment protocols. Um, we decode those on the fly. As that transaction data is coming in, um, the various things that kind of look like snowflakes, the blue things, um, what those are are supposed to be representing the um, switch span or tap ports. So from those places on the network, at every link of the transaction journey, we are pulling that information down. We are correlating it on the fly. And what you get is that full end-to-end -end transaction. Now, in the case of man-in-the-middle attacks, again, we have malware that sits on the switch. And essentially, that malware is saying, yeah, I'm authorizing all of these transactions, no problem. Well, they have not made it back to the authorization host that's sitting on the end. Um, with iNeco Insight, we can actually pick up on those transaction links that are missing within the transaction itself. Now, if you have a back-end fraud system, which is very necessary for other reasons, that's great, but if the transaction does not make it to your back-end fraud system, you're not going to pick up that type of an attack. Great. So, yeah. Perfect. A lot of benefits and, and uh, that's, I think I just still have uh, some more information, right? This is for 